In this video, I'm going to show you how you can play music, such as background music. And in the audio folder, there should be a file called electrohouse.wave, and that is the one that we are going to be playing. And to do that, we do it a lot like with audio load sound. Create a local variable called sound music, and it equals audio.loadstream. And the parameters for load stream are basically the same as for load sound. We want the name of the audio file, and that is in the folder audio, and then it's electrohouse.wave. And we're going to skip the bass dir here. And so we've got sound music, and we can actually make this work just by pasting that in there. So that the event listener is still on the runtime. When we tap the screen, it'll call play sound. And this is the function play sound. And if audio is playing and we have that set to true up here, then it will do audio play sound music. So playing an audio that's loaded with load stream is exactly the same as playing one that was loaded with load sound. It uses the same audio dot play call. So let's go ahead and save this and try it. And now if I click on the screen, we should get the music playing. And there we go. And of course, we don't have any way to stop it right now. So I'm just going to stop the simulator there. So let's go ahead and put in a button that we can use to start the music and a button to stop the music, because I want to show you some other kind of cool stuff that you can do with music and with audio in general. So right down here above the runtime listener, let's create a new button. So button play equals display dot new image. And over here in images, there should be a file called buttonplay.png. We're going to go ahead and load that. And then I'm going to copy this so that I can save some time here. Paste that. Dot x equals center x minus 110. I checked out ahead of time to know where to put this. And button play dot y equals 80. And button play dot operation. We haven't covered that yet. That equals play. And remember what I had said before, that display.newImage returns the display image, but this display image is actually a table, a Lua table. And as we know from the Lua tables video, you can attach a property to that table of any kind that you want. So I just created one called operation. So buttonplay.operation equals play. This is so that later on we can use the same function as when we press the play button and the stop button and we even add a fade out button, we can call the same function and it'll just check that operation to see, oh, what am I supposed to be doing? I know a button was pressed. Which button was it? So we're going to do it like this. And then instead of the runtime here, I'm going to get rid of that and we'll just say button play, add event listener, tap, and we're going to create a new one called button hit. Okay, so we need a button hit function. And since this is coming from an event listener, it's going to be passing in an event record. I see a typo already. Glad I caught that ahead of time. So the first thing we're going to do is find out what we should be doing. So we're going to set up a local variable called action, and that's going to equal event.target. And you remember what event.target is? Whatever button you click, that is what event.target is. So or whether it's some kind of image that you have clicked that has an event listener on it, that's what's going to be in target. So we could say event.target.operation, and that will, in this case, pass back play. So when we click the play button here, once it gets into this point, action will then equal play. So now we're going to check that out. If action equals play, then, and now we call play sound. And that's the only thing we need in here right now. We'll add the stop button in a moment. Let's just check and make sure that this works okay. There's our play music button, and let's try it. And it starts the music. Okay, that's cool. So let's go ahead and create the stop button. And it's going to be almost exactly the same, so I'm going to copy and paste. And this is going to be called button stop. Button stop rewind. And the Y is going to be at 140. And so now when it goes into button hit, we need to check for else if action equals stop then and to stop the audio that's playing it's audio dot stop that easy so let's go ahead and try this all right so now when i hit the play button 
it starts playing. I want to hit the stop button. It stops. Let me hit the play button again. And you may have noticed that it doesn't rewind. It just stops at where it is. It's almost like a pause button. And it continues playing then when I hit the play button. So let's go ahead and fix this and make it rewind. And that is actually very easily done right here after audio.stop. We're going to do audio.rewind. It's cool that the stuff we want to do is so easy. So let's go ahead and try this again now. Play the music. And we hit stop rewind. And we'll see now when we hit play again, it starts at the beginning. It did not. And the reason it didn't rewind is because of channels. Now you saw how easy it was to play a quick special effects type sound. And even how easy it was to play some music. But once you want to get into things like fading things out and rewind and things like that, then you have to find out about channel management. And we're going to do that in the very next video.